Assalamu alaikum, my name is Yusuf Ismail and the program you're watching is I Beg to Differ. This program focuses on interactive debate on socio-economic, political, cultural and religious issues affecting us as South Africans and certainly looking at some of the global dominant trends in the international community. Black nationalism, Indian nationalism, racial identity. Does it have a role to play within the Islamic worldview? Well, that's what we're going to be debating tonight as we interrogate unpack and examine the first South African black Muslim conference that will be held over the Easter weekend at the Soweto Amphitheater. What does it entail? Who is actually being represented? What are some of the issues that are going to be discussed? And above all, does this conference reinvigorate some of the racial tensions already affecting and permeating our fragile societies? Well, joining me in the studios to debate the subject, I'm joined by Rasul Sneiman, who is the founder and chair of the Federation of Khoisan People. Welcome, Rasul. Thank you, Yusuf, and hi to the listeners. Thank you. And I'm also joined via Skype by Aslam Olisi Tawana, who is, in fact, the chairperson, the spokesperson for the um, South African Black Muslim Conference. Welcome, Aslam, and it's good to have you on the show. Thank you, uh, Yusuf. Aslam, let me start off with you, and I think there's a bit of a crackle, so just forgive us if there's a miscommunication. Let me start off with you. Um, the South African Black Muslim Conference, this is the first in South Africa. What does it stand for? Um, the question I wanted to know is, what does the South African Black Muslim Conference stand for, and what's the purpose and significance of such a conference? Okay, as we all know that this is a very historical conference wherein uh, black Muslims in South Africa uh, are coming together uh, to discuss issues pertinent uh, to, to them, uh, challenges uh, that they face um, as a community, and uh, how we can also discuss issues of development um, uh, so that we can be able to can empower ourselves, so that we can, as a community, be able to take forward our programs uh, throughout the country. Um, the Black Muslim uh, Conference uh, will be hosted by the uh, by the Khalting uh, Muslim Shura Council, um, and then all Muslims throughout the country will be coming together, um, uh, Black Muslims, so that you can discuss the various issues. Okay, just quickly, I just want to know and determine something. Why address it, firstly, uh, by in terms of label, in terms of a specific artificial construct? Why call it for, for, for particular reasons? black muslim conference is there not a possibility that this could be viewed in some circles as inherently div d d d divisive by virtue of the fact that the south african muslim population in the south african diaspora comprises of indians comprises of blacks comprises of the sm a sprinkling of whites why black muslim conference i mean you are probably familiar with the context of the black muslims uh, in the united the, states the reason why it is uh, um uh, constructed as such is, is because of the target audience that we expect to, to reach. And the target or, or, or the, um, audience that we want to reach is, uh, is the ones who come out of township areas, Muslims who come out of rural areas. Uh, it's the left experience uh, of, of a people um, in those, in those uh, areas. Therefore, we, we, have named, we have called it the Black Muslim uh, Conference particularly so that we can be able to can reach that target audience uh, because they've got very pertinent issues um, uh, and, and challenges that they need to address. So um, it's got nothing to do with uh, the exclusion of any other person, any other race, but it's because the target audience is, is that most experience at, uh, of the people in the various areas, in the rural areas, in the township areas, who happen to be Muslims, because the challenges that they face as a people are, are very much uh, peculiar to them uh, in terms of uh, how they are perceived by the community in which they come from, uh, how they are perceived by society as a whole, by the families. Uh, so, so this one is specifically to reach their target audience so that we can discuss the issues pertinent to us as a people. Okay, just quickly. Um, when you look at some of these issues that you are basically talking about, and I would assume that um, you are looking at the socio-economic factors 
um, of black Muslims in the township, the challenges that are specifically idiosyncratic to them in terms of development, in terms of possibly poverty, um, in terms of maybe how they're integrating in their own particular societies. So are you saying then that these are the, 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 the specific core issues that you'll be addressing to the exclusion of the broader uh, fabric of the South African Muslim community? Correct. Let me just give the, the various, the, the, the various uh, uh, themes uh, and, and topics that, that, will be, uh, that, that will be of discussion at the conference. For example, uh, the first one is, is the state of, of black ulamas in the townships. Uh, the second one is uh, black Muslims and economic development. Uh, the third one is social status of black Muslims in South, in South Africa. The fourth one is the development of Muslim women in the township. And then the, the last one is the black Muslims and education. So if you look at these topics, uh, these broad topics, uh, with the various speakers that, were, uh, that will be invited on the, as panelists, they will be covering these six broad uh, uh, um, uh, issues uh, which, will be, uh, which will enable us when we come out of the conference, we should be able to can go to our various communities and our different organizations that we come from and be able to can, uh, implement some of these programs to can see how we can uh, develop and uplift uh, our, our people, uh, Muslims in our community. Could not the South African Muslim community by and large regardless of your racial background, have come together or uh, had a forum coordinated perhaps by groups like the Gauteng Muslim Shura Council and collectively come together and dealt with these particular aspects as opposed to making this from what it appears to be a black exclusivist problem because some of the problems you're, you're mentioning affect all communities across racial backgrounds and across economic divides without any kind of race apportion. I'm just suggesting why specifically have a kind of what appears to be exclusionary conference hosted by black Muslims for black Muslims whereas a broader fabric of South African Muslim community could have come together to collectively deal and address with some of these issues. Well, let me just let me just give you a, a, a particular example, for example. Now, firstly, it is not correct that people perceive this um, as such, because that is not the intention of the conference. Uh, you know, the intention of the conference is, and I say, let me give you this example. For example, uh, you find in our communities uh, a person becomes a Muslim, is the only Muslim in the family. And uh, then the, 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 the person passes away. And when the person passes away, then we have got the issues of Janaga. Uh, those, they are very serious challenges to a degree that uh, in, in my locality, the, 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 uh, we, we had to go to court and, and seek a court order um, to, pre to prevent uh, the family members to bury the person uh, in uh, a not Islamic uh, way, and, and and we won the court case, and uh, so 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 we, those are peculiar to us. The other the other issue is is the spreading of dawah. I mean, uh, we sp how how are we going to spread dawah if you don't understand the community and the and the intricacies of the community and the background of the community and how people uh, perceive Islam to be? But if we are to uh, construct a dawah program, uh, which is uh, going to assist us because we've got a specific uh, uh, a way in which how we uh, take over the message of Islam to our people, and 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 it's possible to us. You, you understand what I mean? And and, and those are some of the uh, things that we need to discuss. We also need to discuss how how we obviously uplift our people from an economical perspective, from a business aspect bring them into the mainstream economy and things like that. So, so that is why we are saying that the, the conference should not be perceived to be other than what we are saying. Because what we are saying is, 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 is what the conference would be. What other people are saying, um, well, I'm sure we can't be held responsible for, for, uh, for what they think the conference is. But it's not about that. And, uh, and uh, we are very surprised that why is the conference raising so much controversy? Because we, we, we have seen communities come together on the basis of, of various, I mean, the, 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 the Pakistani guys have got their meetings coming together, uh, the Senegalese, the, the Malawians now recently, and there was no issue. Now, when the indigenous uh, people of, of, the, of the country come together, of Muslim, uh, uh, Muslims of, of, of indi uh, the indigenous uh, South Africans, 
It raises issues. Why is it raising issues? We, we don't understand the, the reason why it raises issues. Okay, um, Aslam, I just, just before, I just want to bring in my guest in the studio, Rasul Sneiman, if I may just ask you, Rasul. The issue, the issue that Aslam is mentioning, and maybe if I just ask you to also raise your voice so we can have a communication, not a communication barrier between the, the three of us. He, Aslam's perspective, and we want to kind of interrogate, is that there's nothing untoward um, or racially exclusive about this particular conference. Um, this is basically needs to be viewed in the context of some of the challenges faced by black Muslims in the townships, um, the issue of religious leadership amongst black Muslims, the issue of the role of women, uh, integration within their own communities. And his perspective is that if black Muslims come together in the form of a conference and organize something, a get together for purpose of dealing with some of these challenges, he doesn't see it as inherently problematic. Would you disagree? Uh, yes, I disagree. Um, although the intention may be good, and it might be a response to a particular situation, I think the response is flawed. I think it's deeply flawed. Uh, for one, when we look at the term black, for example, it has connotations. It is a loaded, nuanced uh, term, which raises specters of, for example, nationalism. It means we deal with our problems and others must deal with their problems outside the nation. Uh, I find it very problematic uh, in the sense that when we construct things, like they say, uh, with good intentions, but they say the way to hell is paved with good intentions. So, so in terms of problems with the conference, what would, you, what would your chief, if you could kind of nail down let's say, the top two issues problematic with this conference, what would that be? Well, for one, whether, whether the organizers say it's inclusive or not is besides the point, because the minute you use a terminology like black, it becomes exclusive. And I haven't yet, and in fact, I'd like to have the term black explained to me, because the government, you, we, we had a, a discussion with with uh, uh, Zigalala, for example, where he used, not with him, but about him, where he used the term black in a particular way. Yes. Uh, we currently, uh, as the Khoisan people now, I'm going to talk from that perspective, uh, we've currently been oppressed by the term black, in a, used in a particular way. Now, we have to first start at the beginning and say, what does black mean? Firstly, the second thing is what does black mean within the context of Islam? Because mm. Islam, there's no black, there's no brown, there's no yellow, there's no green. Mm. Now, I understand and sympathize with the brothers perhaps responding to particular circumstances challenges which might face. be chauvinism, for example, which might be economic disparities, which might be structural racism, for example. But I disagree very strongly with the method in which they are responding to this. So the appellation, basically, of affixing the term black Muslim conference automatically creates the element of racial exclusivity. Well, it's, it's, it's problematic because, you see, when you use terminology, for example, we are linked to the, to, the, to, the, to the Black Panthers Party, which is a black nationalist party. I'm a Pan-Africanist. And in Pan-African terms, there's no such thing as black. Steve Biko used the term black for a particular purpose. And black meant a state of mind of the oppressed. Uh, I'm fighting nationalism. Nationalism whether it's black, brown, yellow, or blue. Uh, within our Khoisan people, for example, I'm using the term our as the oppressed people by nationalism. They are victims of black nationalism. And we were all victims of white nationalism. So nationalism is not a good response to nationalism. Are you saying that this has nationalistic tones and exclusivist tones to In it? Inadvertently, there are no innocent words. Black is no more an innocent word. Black is a nuanced, loaded word. And we must see it from its complexity, not 
the simplicity and reductionist meaning Man, in that we give it. Rasul, I'm going to stop you at that. And Aslam, we're going to just stop. We have to go for a quick ad break. And then I'm going to explore this aspect with you, Aslam, in terms of how you could respond and what your response would be uh, based on what Rasul says. But we're going to come back and we're going to go on further into this debate. Welcome back to our Beg to Differ and I'm your host Yusuf Ismail and today we're discussing the contentious issue or perhaps not so contentious the South African Black Muslim Conference that will be held in Soweto at the Soweto Amphitheater over Easter weekend. Aslam, before we went for the break you heard Rasul's uh, response to the whole notion of the of the Black Muslim Conference. His perspective is that even when you look at the term black the term black inherently is loaded it is nuanced, it has a multiplicity of meanings, and effectively you are creating more of a conundrum than in fact solving problems, notwithstanding the fact that there are legitimate challenges to black Muslims in the community. But when you're talking about black, who are exactly are you referring to? Uh, we find it difficult that, uh, we find it difficult that um, by calling us the way we are calling it is being problematized. Um, in, in, in the country, um, and uh, to a degree that uh, 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 the issue of uh, uh, the conference organizers, uh, uh, the, uh, the people who are coming together, uh, being accused that uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the basis that uh, the Khoisan are, are victims, for example, of PEE or the, the word black. We, we, we say black is the learned experience. Um, if that is the learned experience, uh, then the concern can, uh, can identify themselves with the conference. I mean, uh, why should it be a problem? The uh, second aspect is uh, uh, we, we don't want comparisons to be made uh, on the, the basis of, 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 of actually the Black Muslim Conference with any other organization in, in, in the world to uh, present themselves whatever. We are saying that this is a localized problem. This has got absolutely nothing to do with national, uh, 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 nationalists. Uh, this has everything to do with how we can be able to can change our issues as a community uh, forward. Um, the, as a people, and discuss this as a people, and uh, the work may not be a problem at the way how it is being problematized. Okay. I mean, um, uh, Aslam, 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 just quickly, Aslam, Aslam, just speak closer to the mic. We can't hear you. You are breaking up slightly. So you can just come closer to your phone so we can hear you slightly better. Okay. If the, if the, if, if, if the uh, community that uh, uh, Sun is representing has the same experience, then they should register to attend the conference. I mean, I, I, I really don't understand uh, uh, what the fuss is about this. And, and, and for us to reduce the conference to that is a bit of is a bit problematic for us because actually um, that is not what we want to convey. Uh, uh, what we want to convey to society and to communities uh, around the country is that we come together and we're going to discuss these particular issues. And, uh, and we find it uh, difficult that uh, people must uh, uh, then uh, begin to uh, prioritize how we are naming the conference. And we are saying, you break is the issue of the world experience. And if they have the world experience, so be it. Okay, Rasul, just a resp quick response, Rasul. Uh, I, think, I think, as I said earlier, uh, what happens is we're doing things uh, with good intentions. And I believe, as I said earlier, I believe there may be legitimate grievances, but the grievances so far are being skirted and they're not being raised as to what led to the conference and what led to it being deemed black. The, the fact that we begin to use the term black becomes problematic because... By default, it's nationalistic, by default. And it's not that uh, this conference is the only one that's being uh, addressed. When the Hilal Mosque was being uh, developed, I raised the same argument with the Memon community when they said, we Memons have to do. Now we have... Or the NMJ Hall. Yes. Now we have uh, the similar rhetoric where it's saying, we black people have to do. Now... 
Islam, we have to look at Islam and what constitutes Islam. Islam is one whole. It's one inclusive whole that has no color, that has no tribe, that has no nationalism. What it has is one community. That's why we use the term Ummah. Within the Ummah there has been problems. There have been structural problems. There have been economic problems. There have been social problems. There has been discrimination. There has been a whole range of problems that I don't think can be shuffled into one corner as a black problem. There's no black problem. There's a Muslim problem. And I believe that we should have all gotten together and solved the problems. If, for example, the problems are in the mosques, for example, if the problems are economic dis uh, inequality, we should be addressing those problems, not as black people, but as Muslims. Once we start, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said we are one ummah and he knitted his hands. Now we are pulling that apart in, and responding as nationalists to nationalism. Because if you look at, for example, the problems, the problems are Indian nationalism. Uh, for example, Aslam is not saying it. He's saying it but not saying it. And I think we need honesty. Uh, Aslam, are you basically saying that Aslam is afraid to pinpoint the grievance that he has. Exactly. Uh, I think... I, is, is that the issue, Aslam, that you are afraid to pinpoint the actual <coughs> grievance that you have, Indian nationalism? Uh, Aslam, just come closer. Cl come, Aslam, hold on, hold on. Come, we, 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 we're getting a crackle. We're getting a crackle. Just come closer and uh, perhaps just speak lower. Okay. We have said from the beginning, from the start of the interview, what we want to achieve. Uh, for for us to then turn around to say, no, that's a nationalist thing, and you are doing exactly what the Roman community is doing, you are doing exactly like who is doing it. What should, why should the determination of what we want to do be so by that's why it's not correct. Uh, we have said these are the six broad uh, uh, topics that we want to address. Uh, and, uh, and we want to address them uh, all our own so that we can be able to come up with solutions and uh, be able to can take this thing forward as a community so that everybody can then come in to say this is how uh, 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 at, at, at the conference came up with the resolutions, this is what we're going to implement. It's got nothing to do with uh, national, uh, being a nationalist organization or being okay. nationalist okay. Uh, ourselves. Who's we? Uh, okay, okay, okay. I, 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 Oh, okay, Aslam, just quickly, uh, I'm here, we, we can hear you, just quickly, I just want to clarify one thing. Um, the, the, the definition of an ummah, by its very nature, it's collective. The point Rasul was making that the issue of black, the default position of black, is in fact inherently nationalistic, particularly taking into account the fact that from your perspective, you are incorporating the indigenous communities of South Africa, which means Zulu, Oza, Susutu, the black community are in fact the Africans indigenous to South Africa. That by default, that's a default position is nationalistic and it contradicts the notion of the whole concept of Ummah. And I mean this goes further for example, if you look at some of the solutions, you're saying people are, are, are not excluded. How many people of other colors, of other race groups for example, are speakers at your conference? Are there any Indian speakers? Are there white speakers? Are there colored speakers? Or are they predominantly black Muslim speakers? After Hijrah, um, there are two groups, uh, the Ansari and the, and the Muhajirin. Uh, you know, the Nabi would allow the Ansari to meet as Ansari and the Muhajirin to meet as Muhajirin. And after they've met, then they bring the issues to the Iturmal and discuss them collectively. But they would have been allowed to discuss them individually. So we, 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 don't, we find it problematic that we say we as a people have less experience. And if anyone has less experience of that, they are welcome to, to, to join the conference. We are finding it problematic that we are now being seen as uh, nationalists. We are uh, we, the, the, the speakers withdrawing the speakers from our communities with the left experience from the townships and uh, from the rural areas. That is the type of speaker that we have uh, 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 invited to come and speak to at the conference. 
Why the issue is we want to contract us. Uh, just recently, the, 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 the women had a conference about a year, two, year, two years ago. Uh, I think it was last year or two years back. Muslim uh, Muslim came together. There were so many Indian speakers there. Not that we are uh, uh, saying there's anything wrong. It's fine. They tell everything that way. So, so we are saying this conference as well. We're coming together, we're drawing speakers from our various people, you know, various ulama is on this program, uh, various academics, business people are on the program. So we can discuss and share ideas how we can be able to take our community forward. And, and, and let, us be, uh, let us be honest with one another. This thing is only and only to discuss what we want to discuss so that we can take forward our people in those communities. Okay, so, so just clarify that, Rasul, I'm going to come to you. The speakers in your, uh, at your conference and those who are going to purportedly offer the solutions are black. Whether it's business leaders, whether it's ulama, whether it's members of the community, they're going to be black. I can't come to your conference and speak. Rasul won't be able to come to your conference and speak. I won't be able to participate as an active participant. If I could come, I'll just simply be an observer. Would I be correct that the speakers... The contributors to the conference will be predominantly black, mainly black. There's a target audience we're trying to get one. Secondly, if you want to register, you uh, you should go ahead, register, attend the conference, but you just like any other person. But remember, the issues that we're going to discuss are pertinent to, uh, to, to, to that list of experience of English. So if you want to attend, no, welcome to attend uh, the, the, the conference. There's, there's nothing preventing you or preventing you from attending the conference. We will send out our special forms. Everybody is uh, it's welcome to do that if they want to attend. Okay, okay, just quickly, I think we, we, we seem to have a bit of a crackle with the communication. We're going to try and address that, and I'm going to ask my technician to address the issue of the, of the crackle. But just quickly, Rasul, you've heard his response and, and your, 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 your particular you, reply. You see, I'm, I'm having a problem with this idea of our community. Okay, w when you say uh, our community in, in, in relation to in, Aslam. In how it's being applied. There's only one community. Yes. The Muslim community. There are no sub-communities. Which some sub would argue is also exclusivist as well. Well, the in, in relation to the broader aspects of uh, Aslam, Africa. Aslam is taking umbrage to the fact that I'm using the term nationalism. But one has to understand what is nationalism. Uh, Islam is egalitarian in nature. It's, it's horizontal. Everybody is equal. No one is superior to another except in piety. No one. They're saying they're maintaining that. Right. Now... That's not a maintenance of it. Like I'm saying, by default, they, they're doing something wrong. By default, in their response. Now, when we look at nationalism, nationalism means loyalty and devotion to a nation, a sense of national consciousness exalting one nation above another or making it peculiar. We are Muslims. I, for example, there's nothing that Aslam can experience that I haven't experienced. I come to Islam as well. It's not that I was born a Muslim. I came to Islam. I lost my family. I lost uh, my community looked on me differently. So what makes me different to his experience? Uh, I interact in various communities. I interact, for example, I work in rural communities. And they are rural Muslims as well. Okay, okay, okay. Aslam, your, your response, your reply? What, the, so, so I'm finding difficult that Rasul and the people that he's representing are saying that they are suitable. No, they are not suitable at all. They must come. You, uh, 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 and come to the conference and come and discuss. You have to feel that by default they are doing something wrong. That, that is the other section of, of, of the situation. We don't think, however, that is the case. Okay, okay, Aslam, Aslam, when you talk about black, are you, are you, are, would you include Indians amongst black? Indians were categorized as blacks by the apartheid government. In the context of this conference, would you include Indians 
as black as well? Or would they not be considered black? No, no. In the spectral apartheid thing, Indians were not regarded as black. Uh, it is, it is the, it is the new dispensation, and it has been the the political uh, elements uh, in the country that define black as as those uh, who have those lived experience in terms of uh, Indian colored and uh, as well as um, African people. So let us not change the track here now. Uh, uh, the issue that we are raising. Uh, it should not be uh, confused with uh, the, 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 the environment, the apartheid environment, which would from which, as I say, by the way, they did not declare Indian people, they declared them as Indian people, and not as black. It is the political uh, 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 environment that classified them as black. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, so we find it very uh, difficult that actually we have discussed that issue in terms of and in the political uh, sphere, what the, the term black means. But yeah, the term black has a very specific context. Okay. And again, okay. what we are saying. So, so, so the, it, would Indian Muslims and white Muslims, would they have a role to play in the conference? We're not talking about attending and just sitting in. Would Indian and black and, 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 and colored, would Indian colored and white Muslims have a role to play in this conference? Or would their issues not be looked at, um, would they not be part and parcel of the idiosyncrasies that perhaps affect those in the townships? Well, 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 just, I just need to know and, 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 and kind of give me that position. Okay, Russell? Uh, the very fact that you exclude people from presenting their views is exclusive. Uh, if, for example, if I had a Muslim conference and I, there were people across the board affected by them gravitating to Islam, then they should all be able to present their views. A conference generally is determined by who presents what. It sets the tone. And when you set the tone, the premises set, and whatever outcomes from there emerge, they emerged at, with a predetermined trajectory. And I am arguing the fact that there wasn't an invite to everyone that said, come, let's design this. It was designed in an exclusive corner, the terms of reference being used in an exclusive corner, therefore the outcomes are for a, an exclusive group. Uh, I'm going to argue this. I'm going to argue it very strongly because I argue all groups that go into little corners and say we are exclusively. Uh, for example, the, uh, 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 Aslam just made a statement which got me worried. He said Indians, coloreds and Africans. Does that mean I'm not an African? This is exactly the point that we are raising where subconsciously we are thrown out of the African uh, paradigm. We are thrown out of the black paradigm and soon we'll be thrown out of the Muslim paradigm as well as nationalism, as nationalisms become the center point. And I argue this, I'm saying guys, as brothers, as brothers, you all are making a mistake. Yeah, is there not a mistake being made? You heard the point by Rasul. Yes, um, um, uh, Aslam. I was doing that documentation in terms of how the South African government classified uh, uh, in the past. I was not uh, classifying it, in, uh, I was giving the population register how it looked uh, before. It was uh, white. 
uh, Indian, colored, and then African. I, it's not, it's not my lack of Who's stuff. African? Uh, That's uh, the point. Okay, okay, in terms of the conference, how would you define African? What, what the soon is to me is, uh, is, is to be on the issue that I was giving an example of how the South African government before 1994 used to classify the people in terms of, in terms of, and, uh, of, of the population register. So, um, but that is not the crux of the matter. Okay. Under discussion. It's, 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 I so think, how can getting to I think, it's not the crux of the matter? I think it goes to the heart of the matter. Why I say this is, I dislike and fight nationalisms. I have been fighting Indian nationalism for a long time. I have been fighting structural nationalism for a long time. And I am fighting economic nationalism for a long time because it's where you place our people and our interests above others. Uh, Indian nationalism has meant that we cannot be trustees of the mosque. Hmm. For example, we cannot be members of these organizations that are handling monies. We cannot be in control of our dawah. We cannot be in control of the image of Islam. That's nationalist. It's Indian nationalism. Now I'm hearing another voice that's coming out that's identical to the, to the Indian nationalist that's saying, but I'm black nationalist. Now, when you have these two competing nationalisms, they separate entities that are conflicting in an entity like Islam, which comes together. There should be a progressive space. There should be a progressive movement that says, we have problems in Islam. Let's solve these problems. Because whether you are black nationalist or an Indian nationalist, there are problems with nationalism in itself. And we cannot use a reactionary mm. means to, 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 to deal with a reactionary problem. That, that, that's a point, Aslam. Is that, isn't it no, just no, simply... No, 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 no. I, 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 I One is nationalist to themselves and the people they present from, from being referred to as such. You can Okay. Why is it an issue? I really find it very difficult to understand why it's an issue. Okay, okay, Aslam, Aslam, uh, Aslam, uh, Aslam, let, let's reverse this, let's reverse this. Let's assume tomorrow, and I would be offended by this, let's assume tomorrow we have the Indian Muslims of South Africa coming together and having, probably at one of the major halls, a South African Indian Muslim conference. Would you find that offensive? Or would you find that would you find that offensive or accept? Because I would find that offensive. If I see a South African Indian Muslim conference, I would find that offensive. I would object to that. Would you object to that? Uh, no. let, me, let, me, let me just um, um, is we are saying that we are coming together because we have opportunities that we have to discuss in our community. So, so, so uh, I mean, you may not. That's their, that's their issue. I mean, uh, we should not be seen to be anti anyone. We should be seen to be saying that we are coming together to discuss issues that we have us. Period. So, 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 so it's coming back. So, you wouldn't have an issue with Indian Muslims coming together having a conference and saying let's look at the problems facing Indian Muslims you don't have a problem with that and and you won't find that you won't find that racially exclusive but we back to the paradigm of us and them, which is nationalistic. So don't you see that as divides of South African Indian Muslim Conference, South African Black Muslim Conference, South African Colored Muslim Conference? I mean, the point Rasul was making is that yes, he was speaking about Indian nationalism, and I see you didn't want to deal with that because it is a problem. Our mosques, our trust boards, in many respects, are dominated by Indians. There's an exclusionary element around them. No problem. And I accept that particular issue. And certainly that's an aspect that should concern you, which you haven't raised. But taking that it into is, account. You know, why, so it, it, it is because, it is because what, the, what the people in the, in the, in the, in the, in the 
through the media are doing is trying to show that the conference is actually a racist conference uh, and that they are excluding other races and other nationalities. That is not the case. I have explained exactly the six broad uh, 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 topics that we're going to cover. And we don't want to ask to be Okay, so let, let okay, oh, okay, Aslam, I just want to stop. That, 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 that's a that's a question you raised. He's he's Aslam, uh, Aslam's question, Rasul, is what is the underlying fear of uh, and, and he sees it as not problematic of blacks coming together and discussing their concerns. My underlying fear is the recreation of apartheid. Apartness. Apartheid was apartness. Where different groups go into different corners based on particular peculiarities. Whether those peculiarities are skin color, labels, hair, whatever the case may be, they go into those corners. Therefore, this is a recreation of the past. Uh, I fight, I fight uh, uh, Khoisan nationalism because I say it's recreating the past. Couldn't minorities come together? Because he was making the point about Pakistanis or Malawians coming together and having their enclaves in a minority you, context. You see, Yusuf, if we were not Muslims, I would still understand this. Believe me. The Prophet, peace be upon him, dealt with this 1400 years ago. Why are we, instead of addressing the elephant in the room, we want to go somewhere else and, and create another a problem that looks exactly like the elephant that's in the room? Uh, the elephant in the room, in this case, being Indian nationalism in the Muslim well, community? When I discuss, this is not the only discussion we've had. I've had another discussion where other people had different views. They said Islam is being perceived as an Indian religion. Yes. Now, Aslam is not being honest about this. Aslam is waffling and he's doing what the politicians do. He's skirting the issue. Islam is being viewed as, a, as an Indian religion, which it is not. By black people. By black people. Why is it, why is it being viewed like that? Is because of the dominant position of the, of, the, of the merchant class in Islam who have colonized Islam. And Aslam and this uh, conference is not talking to that. But, but, but that's a point. Isn't, isn't this conference actually a reaction to that, but he's not mentioning it? Well, what's happening, uh, the guys are trying to play politics. Uh, and I, 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 yeah, Islam, let's, let's, let's ask you, Aslam, I mean, isn't that the issue? Indian nationalism, isn't it? Rasul, 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 Rasul. Yes. Okay, but 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 Aslam, 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 hold on. I asked. Oh, okay, but Aslam, just hold, hold on. I need I need to ask you this, Aslam. I need you surely are aware of the fact, and I've experiences working in Islamic organizations that there is a perception amongst blacks that Islam is an Indian religion that a lot of the mosques are Indian dominated in this particular country. Is your conference not going to be dealing and addressing that aspect? Because, because I was of the view that this was a reaction to the status quo in the Indian Muslim community. That was my position. That was my understanding. And I feel that you don't want to address that aspect. Because effectively, you play off against that. It is, it is Uh, and, and, and for us to, to be able to translate the message, the, 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 the 
lessons to our people to explain them the universality of, of our deal of Islam is what the conference will be discussing. Yes, indeed, there are elements. Uh, but the fact that the other issues, the nationalism issues, the elephants that uh, Rasul is talking about, let alone the conference of that cup, uh, Rasul uh, organized a conference and discuss those elephants. We must discuss the matters we want to discuss and come out of the conference that has been given some sort of a dream. Okay. So, uh, uh, Aslam, hold on, Rasul. Rasul, I, I just have to. I just have to go for a, uh, Aslam, Rasul. I just have to go for a quick ad break. We're going to be back shortly. Welcome back to I Beg to Differ, and we are in our segment discussing this contentious issue of um, uh, the South African Black Muslim Conference that's going to be held at the Soweto Amphitheatre over the Easter weekend. Rasul, just before we went to a break, um, the, the, the point that Aslam was basically making is that we are creating, or you are creating an agenda for him, uh, which is in fact not the, uh, the, the, the whole, the, the end, the, 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 the be all, and the trajectory that this particular conference is in fact uh, focusing on. What's your response to that? Well, uh, I don't create an agenda. Islam creates an agenda. Which is non-racial, non-exclusivity. Yes, the agenda was set by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, 1400 years ago. And in 1400 years ago, I can only subscribe to those principles. I subscribe to the principles of justice. I subscribe to the principle of inclusivity. I, in, I subscribe to the, to the principles of equality. So the top five problems of this conference are what? If we look at the, at the conference, firstly, by default, it becomes nationalistic because it talks about our people. Black. No, and the our people is ring-fenced. It's okay. not an open our people. That is congruent with the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, or Islam itself. The second thing is it ignores the fundamental problems in the society. Which are? For one, the, the colonization of Islam by the, by the elitist uh, uh, Indian Muslims. Because when we say elitist Indian Muslims, Indian Muslims fall into two categories. There's a category of the merchant class. And there's the ordinary poor Muslim that's at the bottom. He doesn't have any power. He also has the to put his of hand indentured laborers. Of course. Now, we are not addressing the class, the class aspect. Then we go beyond that. We don't want to talk about the organizations that have been colonized. Why are we, I'm asking, are we gaining benefits from this? Are we afraid to, to, to deal with these issues? Yet Islam tells us to deal with these issues. The third issue is the perception that this creates. This creates a perception, and perceptions may be stronger than truth in the sense that once you start something, you begin to say, we are, then that meaning is interpreted by society at large. The fourth thing is in the wording of this conference. This conference is not a conference. It's the first of many to come. Read the advert. So the advert says, first South African black Muslim conference. Yes. By default... And you have to pay 300 rands to attend. By, uh, the money is irrelevant. But by default, that conference is saying that there are a series of black conferences that are going to emerge. Now I'm asking... Is this an end in itself, or is it a means to another end? If it was a means to another end, you'd have one conference, you'd call all the other offended and affected parties, then you'd have a multi-racial, uh, I don't believe in the term race, but I'll use it, a multi-racial conference where we, as Muslims, begin to address the problems. For example, when we say, uh, are we black Muslims, there are Somalians, for example, who are dealing in Soweto. They are suffering from black nationalism. Where are the black Muslims, supposedly black Muslims, saying, you all are us brothers, we are together. They are being hung out to dry. So, when we say black and our community, those are loaded terms that we are not really looking at. And I think it's about time we, we began to be honest and dealt with the problem, yeah. not shifted the problem somewhere else. Then that's the point, Aslam. Are you going to, for example, address the problems faced by Somali black Muslims, by Sudanese black Muslims, by Congolese black Muslims, by the foreigners, the foreign black Muslims from Africa? Or is it just going to be exclusively South African black Muslims in terms of challenges that you're going to be addressing? I mean, and, and in relation to the points made by Rasul. 
is the lack of experience of South Africa, firstly. Secondly, uh, if, if I can ask Rasul a question, the question that I want to pose to you is, what was the wisdom for the Nabi to, to have the Ansari and to have the Muazirin uh, have a meeting separately? before they come to the Bantu Bar to have a collective meeting. The Mujahir, the, 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 just to clarify... It was because, it, and I can answer that question for you, it was because the Nabi wanted them to discuss their peculiar issues. They didn't want to come together and have peculiar issues. But they were both Arabs. But, 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 Aslam, they were both Arabs. The Muhajirs, they were both Arabs. There was not nationalism. They were both, do you see the point is the Muhajirs and the Ansar were both of the same racial stock. The Muhajir, the only difference was the Ansars were residents of Medina, the Muhajirs were the immigrants. Okay, uh, uh, Rasul, you want to address that? You want, you want to respond uh, to that? Okay, I'll, I'll let Rasul deal with that. Rasul? I thought, I thought Islam was done. I thought Islam was completed. I thought the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, had solved the problem. I didn't think we're going to recreate the problem and say, no, let's go back to pre-Islam. Now we are talking about becoming Makkans all over again. My understanding is the Prophet, peace be upon him, said we are one Ummah. He finished that. He then said, when you all talk, you all talk together because a pain in the head or the finger is a pain the whole body. That's a we point. It affects the one body. And this conference is saying we are not the body. We are another person. That, that's a point. Aslam. A pain to black Muslims in the townships affects me as well. I want to furnish solutions. Rasul wants to give solutions. We want to be included in the problems, in solving problems collectively. Why can't the broader Muslim community come together and solve the problems? He's saying attend the conference. You see, you see, this is what I'm this is what I'm saying. You see, when government frames something and they want to tell you, they sit at the top as experts and they tell you. It's not participation. Even in democracy, they have a direct participation where the people talk to the top and the top talks to the bottom. But when I come and some people are going to lecture me and tell me what my problems are. I want to tell everyone also, as part of that equation, what my problems are, and they should listen. Firstly, the, the conference was flawed in the sense that it never included everyone to decide on the conference. That's number one. So, 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 so Aslam, I just want you to take note because I want you to respond to this just now. Rasul's point is that the conference never came together to include the broader diaspora of South African Muslims. Is that your point, Rasul? Yes. Right. Now, when you structure a conference, any conference, and we've structured conferences before, you include everyone so that they participate, so that the narrative is the same. In, in decision making, that's a point. Well, because he's saying, well, Indians, if you colored Indians, white, you can attend. You, but, but, not, but, it, but, 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 but attending is not the same as exactly. in deciding and coordination. Exactly. For me, it becomes no different to the tricameral parliament that we had. So, sorry, Adam, how do we do what? How do Why no. don't you call it a South African? Okay, okay, Aslam. Why not? Why not address it as a South African Muslim conference? Why Black Muslim conference? No.
So, so if I understand properly, this is a liberal conference that ignores the structural uh, deficiencies in Islam and by default it legitimizes and normalizes it. You, what you are saying is that if I want justice, I must have another conference for justice. Is that what you're saying, brother? Should we have other conferences to deal with specific issues lo to localize communities? Because when you, when, you, when you address the term, I can, I can, for example, understand people in Soweto have a problem. Geographically, you've got a crime issue. All the people of Soweto come together. Or, for example, you've got, say, unemployment in a particular geographical area. I can understand people come together and address, or security concerns, crime on a particular road or particular township. All the people of the community come together. It's localized. When you use the term Muslim, which is, which, is, which is basically divorced from the idea of nationalism, and when you use the term black, it's an oxymoron. You see, you can't have someone that is a, bla a, thin, a, fa a fat thin man. You can't have a fat thin man. So how can you have a black Muslim, white Muslim, Indian Muslim? Alex speaks in the plan specifically about that you may recognize each other. That you may recognize each other. Yes, Surah Hurjurat. We created you into nations and tribes that you may recognize each other, not that you may despise each other. And it says the most exalted of you in the sight of God is he who is most righteous in conduct. So the point is automatically in that verse it breaks down racial inequality. I'm not sure I'm not sure what the people like Rasul means uh, for me I believe that justice is an integral part of the of, of being a Muslim I also believe that there are inequalities that need to be addressed by your group and your conference as well and I think that if you're skirting the issues or maybe not publicly skirting the issues maybe after the conference we should have another dialogue as to what do we intend doing with what comes out of the conference to make the Ummah better. Uh, I think um, with the intentions that uh, the, the were made, I don't have an argument with that. I, I have an argument with the response to the problems. And now I have a second argument with the lack of response to address the, the critical issues that are facing us as an Ummah. Not as black people, as an ummah and the refusal for, for everyone to step up to the plate and okay. address them. Final response, Aslam. Last 20 seconds. Final response. Final response. Your final point. What, what do you aim to achieve? And in response, Russell, final response. No, I just wanted to say, uh, if I should have a subject, I'm going to say, let me mobilize the person who has not taken as the ummah to the 
the conference. But also when we are doing is that we are asking everybody to, to register um, for the conference and I think the twenty first of uh April and should be at so it um, as well, we to, to invite various other uh, people to come and do the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the opening uh, on, on, on Friday. So, uh, yeah, let, let them do it. And I such a conference that we will attend, but uh, the Muslim conference is going out definitely on the day and from the 19th to the 21st of April. Thank you, Aslam. Uh, Rasul, last way forward. I think uh, uh, everyone should attend the conference because no one has a right to close or ring fence the conference. Whether the person is Indian, African, Chinese, Somalian, or everyone else, they should go. The problems that uh, are faced by what uh, Aslam calls our community is a general problem suffered by all people who come into Islam from communities that are non-Muslim. So I don't see any peculiarities. I don't see the people as being peculiar. And uh, this is general. It's a Muslim problem not a black problem. Thank you, Rasul, and thank you, Aslam Tawana. We hope to have this debate again and continue the discussion. Perhaps, Aslam, you could possibly even come down to Durban or we go to Johannesburg. We'd like to continue the debate and the discussion. And that's all we have for this evening. Uh, you've been watching I Beg to Differ, and we were debating the first South African black Muslim conference that will be held at the amphitheater in Soweto over Easter weekend. And certainly, uh, we will obviously, it will obviously generate much more discussion in the immediate future. Join me next week for more interesting and interactive debate on I Beg to Differ. Till next time, this is Yusuf Ismail. Greetings of peace, good evening, and Asalaamu Alaikum.